Hey! 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 Welcome back to another out of this world story from our space. And just as a quick heads up, this is episode 2 of a part 2 series. Link to watch part 1 is in the description below. Update 1 Christmas Day was the first full day I spent in my new apartment. It's still a work in progress as I still have more stuff I want to get, but overall, I've made it my home since I'm going to be here for two years at least. My boys and the eldest girlfriend came over and spent a good portion of the day with me. The girlfriend brought over treats she'd made and also whipped up a really nice meal. I got to sit and talk with my sons in a way I hadn't done in a really long time, and it was nice. My big sis also came over with more goodies and hung out with us also. It had been the first time she'd seen her nephews in nearly a year. Having all of them around did be some real good. As if I were by myself, I think I would have just drank myself into a stupor. Everyone cleared out around eight-ish, and I decided I wanted to go hang out with Joey and his wife, Claudia, hung out with them for a couple of hours. Had a couple of drinks, and then went back home. The next big development happened last week, 1-2-2-9-2-0. Around midday, I get a tech from Nina asking if I was busy that night. I, of course, wasn't, so we agreed to meet up after I got off of work. She shows up, and we go to a diner, not far from where I work. Here in New York City, we're doing indoor dining at 25% capacity, thanks to the Rona. But there is mostly no trouble getting seats because so many of us opt not to dine out as much these days, regardless. So after we're seated and order our food, Nina pretty much lays all of her cards on the table. And, honestly, I knew this was coming. She basically confessed that she's liked me all the way back since we were teenagers, but never got the chance to tell me since Sue swooped in and scooped me up before she could. Her context I've known Nina longer than Sue by two years. As I mentioned, she had been the fourth point of my social square of myself, Oz and Joey. We were the social outcasts in high school. The raver kids who didn't fit into all the other cliques. Back then, Nina had a weight problem and was diabetic. She was the heavy-set goth chick who was super cool, but no guy would ever give a second glance at, but we always had chemistry. These days, Nina is a personal trainer and yoga instructor. She was the ugly duckling who grew into one hell of a beautiful swan, if I must say. Long story short, we decided that upon the finalization of my divorce, we are going to start seeing each other. And, yeah, I slept with her that night. Took her back to my new pad, and we had a grand old time. Am I ashamed of sleeping with her? Hell, no. Nina's been a better friend to me than Sue ever was. That's not saying Sue wasn't my best friend but through the near quarter of a century, I've known Nina. She's always supported me. Even so much as I learned that day, willingly taking a step back from her own feelings to allow me to pursue and eventually start a life with Sue. That resonated with me on a level. I didn't think it would. That kind of selfishness towards another person is the definition of real love. I know. It sounds like I'm just trying to justify in my head that sleeping with her was the right decision. To me, it was, and I plan on exploring what's to come with Nina and I with total commitment. Okay. On to yesterday. The day I met my wife and her lawyer to discuss the divorce. It's now been two weeks since I ghosted my soon-to-be ex-wife. This past Monday, I get a phone call from my staking that Sue's attorney has scheduled a meeting for us to discuss the terms of divorce on 1621, which was yesterday. I met with him the Tuesday morning to discuss the terms I'm wanting. Long story short, uncontested divorce under the grounds of marital neglect from Sue. My terms are full division of assets, Amy selling my half of the house ownership to her. She can have it. We keep our respective vehicles. I keep my cabin in the Poconos, and under the pretense of Myrtle neglect, she gets no spousal support from me. As for 17, what I'll refer to my son as from here on, he's free to choose who he wants to reside with following the divorce which will most likely be me. So Wednesday comes and I show up to my lawyer's office dressed in my Johnny Cash best. My wife and her lawyer, she looks like crap, barely holding it together. I give the stone face. I won't bore you with the lawyer babble, 
but her lawyer presented an offer for terms of reconciliation. I shot them down almost as soon as she finished listing the details of the request. Like I said, I'll spare you the details of the meeting. Long story short, we agreed to a legal separation leading to an uncontested divorce. The only revision is that I will pay her $653 a month of temporary spousal support to cover the cost of utilities until she's gainfully employed again. Yep. She got fired for screwing Poss. He got canned as well. Up to a year after the finalization. I make enough that it won't hurt me financially even if she drags her feet finding a new job. And she's got enough in her savings to live off of for quite some time. Once a full calendar year has passed after the finalization date of the divorce has passed, she's on her own. Small price to pay for being rid of her cheating, but it'll take roughly three months for things to go through. So early April, if there's no cock-ups, I'll be free of her. So after the meeting, my lawyer gives me some final words before telling he'll be in touch to update me on the progress of the filing. Back out on the street, Sue chases me down and asks to see when we talk. I figured I'd give her at least that. She held it together fairly well in the meeting, but outside, let the waterworks flow, saying how sorry she was, and how she never meant it to go as far as it did. She says she never expected to fall in love with Poss, but knew when she thought I was cheating, how wrong it was to betray her own husband in such a way. She asks, could I ever find it in my heart to forgive me? And that maybe in a few years, could we try to start over? That she can't imagine what her life is going to be without me. I tell her to start imagining it soon because this will be the last time I ever speak to or see her. I tell her that 17 is almost a man and old enough to make his own choices as to his own future. I say that I gave her half of my life and every ounce of love I had unconditionally. And she, in her own words, fell in love with another man. That there is absolutely no chance of me ever forgiving her. That all of the love I had for her was slowly killed all of those months she confided in and professed her love to Poss rather than coming to me and telling me she had any form of issue with how things were going with us. I told her I loved who she was once, but I hate who stands before me. And that if I never see her again, it'll be too soon. Here we are on the sidewalk in Midtown Manhattan. Her making a scene trying your eyes out. A couple folks walk by and give side glances, but at that point, I didn't care. I wasn't about to be publicly humiliated by her. I pretty much already socially and professionally destroyed her, but I needed to get the last bit of emotion I had for her out. I finished by telling her I didn't regret the 23 years I spent being her husband. I regret it that in 23 years, she decided the easy way out was the better option. And that and I have your lovely sons of itches on Reddit to thank for this last one because it popped in my head just seconds before I said it. For 23 years, I thought she was mine, but it turned out it was just my turn. Put in my Raycons, turned around it, and walked the F away. Later that night, the father calls me and apologizes. He praises me for always being a good man to his daughter and tells me he's ashamed of her and that he raised her better than what she did. Not gonna lie. I'm going to miss the old man. My dad died years ago, so he's always been my default father figure since, but I can't see myself maintaining a relationship with anyone on her side of the family. After that call, I went on Facebook and symbolically changed my relationship status to divorced. Yeah. It's not final yet, but in my eyes, it's over and done. Like I said, when I make a post on Facebook, it's an event. So plenty of folks started hitting me up over the messaging, asking me questions, and I laid it all out that I filed for divorce with Sue earlier in the day. Of course, Nina called me shocked that I pulled the trigger so fast. Obviously, I was already in the process of it when we spoke, but she had no way of knowing how far it was along. I asked her if she could come over, and, of course, she comes a run in. We knocked boots again, but this time, she stayed the night. We laid in my bed and talked into the wee hours of the morning, and I haven't felt this level of relief and connection in a really long time. Nina gets me, and I can't get enough being around her. Since the day she confided in me, she's all that's been on my mind. Yeah. I know some folks are gonna say it's effed up. I'm moving on so fast.
but as far as I'm concerned, my marriage ended the day Pa lets Sue touch his pecker. So I'm about due. So, yeah, that's it. That's the end. My divorce is in the works, and I'm moving on to start a relationship with Nina. I know when a comment responds to someone, I said I'd probably not marry her again. That was before Nina came clean to me about how she felt towards me, and I can't deny that I feel the same. We're going to take it slow, and we're not announcing anything until the divorce was Sue as legal and as for Sue, I could give a flying F what happened to her. She could move Paws into our old home for all I care. I'll be getting my money for the house over the course of 2021. Four quarterly installments. And aside from the $653, I will pay out directly to her savings account monthly. I never have to see or speak to her again. To all of the words of support, encouragement, and praise, I eternally thank you all. Update 2. The hits just keep on coming. I've been sitting in this house for hours now. Didn't know where to post this, so the sub seemed appropriate. So if you want a bit of backstory, check my post history for the details. I'm not keen on how linking to other subs here works, but my previous two entries are viewable in my profile. The quick version is this. I discovered my wife for 23 years, 45 male was having an affair with a 27-year-old co-worker. We have two sons, 2217. I concocted a plan completely up in her life centered around fooling her into thinking I was having to impair myself. I kept the ruse going for over four and a half months. While compiling evidence of her infidelity as well as securing divorce papers and planning my exit strategy. Slowly moving my personal belongings from our home to a new apartment. Getting a new phone and number, separating my half of our shared income from our joint account, etc. On December 16, 2020, I gathered every bit of proof of her affair I compiled printed it all out from start to that week filed it all into 14 binders, packed 11 into gift wrap boxes, and mailed them all out to the most important people in her life, as well as her HR with an ETA between 12,221,224 of 20. On Christmas Eve, while Shay slept, I took one of the remaining three binders and did the same only this one I taped the divorce notice to the inside cover and left it on my side of the bed, which mind you, she'd had her lover in a number of times along with my old phone and my lawyer's business card and shadow ghost sitter. Over the next four days, her life completely imploded. Her family pretty much executed her. Her friends, the ones who didn't know of the affair, ostracized, and my own mother took her to task, calling her the most scathing and by all things you could possibly think of. Her and her lover were also placed on administrative leave and eventually fired. Last week, we had her divorce hearing and settled on a legal separation into uncontested divorce with a few provisions in place for transitional income since she's now unemployed. I'm to pay out the price for the utilities $653 a month until either she finds gainful employment or upwards to one year after the date of the divorce's finalization. Which is expected to be three months from now. She keeps the house, her car, and her half of the shared assets. I keep my half of the assets, my vehicle, car or motorcycle and boat, and my vacation property, cabin in the Poconos. After the hearing, we had one final change where she tried to explain away her infidelity and beg me to give her a second chance after the divorce is finalized. I, of course, said no. Give her some choice words and walked away from her forever. This brings us to last night. As only my closest friends, two sons, older sister, and mother have my new contact info, and I've completely blocked my soon-to-be ex-wife on all social outlets. She has had no means of reaching me since I left her Christmas Eve. But some of our mutual friends still do. Last night, I'm a hangout in my apartment, and I get a voice call notification on Messenger from one of said friends. One of the few who hadn't abandoned her, following me outing her affairs. She didn't waste any time when I answered and said she had went to check on Sue, the soon-to-gets wife, and found her passed out in the bedroom, phoning out of the mouth with two bottles of empty pills next to her. She's in the ICU and critical, but stable condition. 
the doctor said that she will likely pull through. She's clearly not going to be well after. She begged and pleaded for me to come. Her parents and two of her sisters were also there at the hospital. My guess is they were notified after the hospital attempted to notify me, but Sue would still have my old number as her emergency contact. I simply told her, no. Sue is not my problem anymore, and she clearly decided she wanted to take the easy way out rather than deal with the shame and agony of the 23 marriage she blew up. I then told her friend that if Sue's family were there, they can help her sort out the pieces. But as far as Sue and I are concerned, there is no Sue and I anymore. I then ended the call. I've had a few hours of sleep on it, and my sons called me this morning asking if I knew. I told them, yes. But I also let both of them know that if they want to be there and supportive of their mother, I will not hold it against them or judge them for it. She is their mother after all, but I wash my hands of her. And care little to nothing about what she does for her to herself anymore. They were both a little taken aback by this, but respected my stance. However, now that the news has broke about her suicide attempt, many of those friends who dropped her are all starting to surface again and saying I need to be there for her. That even despite what she did to me, I need to support her in her time of need. I've also been informed that her affair partner tried to visit her this morning, but wasn't allowed because he's not family. I'm getting dog piled on to go see her but I feel nothing for this woman anymore. I haven't for a very long time. I checked out during the process of getting my payback for her betrayal. And I stand by the fact that I don't care at all for what she's done. In fact, it makes me hate her even more. She's the one who is unfaithful. She's the one who thought a near-year-long fling with a guy five years older than her oldest son was worth destroying 23 years. And now that she has to face the consequences of her choices, she chooses the most selfish way to deal with it. Even now, seeing as she's in all likelihood going to survive, she's cultivated immediate sympathy from everyone who took her to task, and I'm being made out to look like the jaded ex-husband unwilling to sympathize for her by most her family. Not her dad. He has reached out to me over the last few hours and said he respects my decisions to stay away. It's like I never even truly knew this woman. 23 effing years and it comes to this. Yes. I know the way I broke things off with her may have put her in a poor mental state. But now a whole new can of worms has been opened because either she had a complete mental breakdown and decided to self-delete herself, or she made an extremely risky and calculated move to call favor back from people who just weeks prior condemned her for betraying me. She cheated on me, and now she's the effing victim. Sorry if this comes off as rantish. But I'm here trying to wrap my brain around this. I want to be perfectly clear. I am not going to visit Sue. She waived her right to me caring about her well-being the day she let pass my personal nickname for her lover, put his dick inside of her. This might come off as heartless because despite the cool, calm collect way I've been throughout my whole ordeal, my feelings are still very much raw, but I don't give an F about this woman. Haven't for a very long time. I'm aware I'm going to be vilified by a number of folk here. I don't much give a crap. Think of me however you want. If you were in my shoes, you'd see her actions vastly different. Some of you folks are going to go look up my post history and see the story of what I did to her, and you're going to draw the conclusion that her suicide attempt was my fault. Then me tormenting her for all those months, fooling her into thinking I was cheating on her while she actively cheated on me then destroying her socially and professionally as a result was a catalyst for her meltdown. Maybe it was. Maybe I am a heartless sociopath. But as Arthur Fleck so famously said, you get what you effing deserve. I gave this woman half of my life and did absolutely everything to be the best possible husband she could ever have. By her own admission, I had no bearing in her decision to step outside of our marriage. She did it for her. Her selfishness knows no bounds, and I am glad to be rid of her. It makes me the bad guy because I will not go see her and never plan on interacting with her ever again, so be it. I hold true to my damn convictions. She made the choice to betray me. She made the choice to put her needs above the needs of our marriage. So now it's my turn to choose to knee over everything else. She can rot in the darkest pit of hell for all I care. 
let everyone else help her fix her. My obligation to ever care about her well-being end of the day we signed the separation agreement. I just needed to get this off my chest. If you're going to cast judgment on me for feeling how I feel, save it. Like I said, above, after 23 years and two children, I never really knew this woman after all. I have no sympathy for her, and I never will. Let her freaking rot. Edit. I've been informed by Sue's dad that she's been moved from the ICU to the mental health wing doctors are still monitoring her mental state. She's conscious and cognitive again, but obviously lethargic. Her father told me she acts, did I come to see her? And he said, no. And she shut down after. He respectfully said any further news he'll share only if I inquire because he understands the headspace him in. Also, I've scheduled counseling for 17. The first consultation is this coming Monday.